whenever we run SSL, we need to have certificates in place in order to avoid certificate errors. The purpose of certificates is to authenticate and prove identity of one party to another party. Let's take an example. We have a client and a server. They do not know each other, but they both know a common trusted root server. So the client and the server both trust the root and does not know each other. That trust relationship to the root is used by the certificates to build a trust between the two parties, client and the server in this example. Let's say that the client needs to connect to a server. The client has a certificate issued to this client and that certificate is signed by the root. The client sends the certificate over to the server and the server verifies the certificate by looking in his list of trusted routes that the server has. If the root server that signed the client certificate is in the list of trusted routes, he can trust the client. If the client certificate is not signed by someone in the trusted root list on the server, the server should not trust the client. This client authentication method can be used to authenticate, for example, VPN clients connecting to head-end VPN servers and so on. But we can do it the other way around as well. If the client connects to a server and the client needs to know the identity of the server, the server sends a server certificate back to the client and that server certificate should be signed by someone that the client trusts. So the client has a list of trusted routes. When the client connects to the server, the server sends back his server certificate to the client and that server certificate is signed by the trusted root. Since the client has a list of trusted routes where this trusted root is, he will trust the server. If we look at the Windows machine running HTTPS, we can see that there is a padlock next to the address in the address bar. That padlock is in most browsers green and locked if everything is okay and not so green and not so good looking if there is some error with the certificate. In this case here, I browse to my site netzero.net. I have a valid certificate installed, which means that everything looks great. Let's have a look at how it looks like. How you do that differs in different browsers, but in most cases you click the padlock and you get more information. This one here in Chrome says that the certificate is valid which I can see already because of the green padlock. I can click a view certificate button to see the certificate. This is the certificate that is protecting this website. Traffic is encrypted between my client and the web server using the server SSL certificate in the server end. And that server SSL certificate is issued by someone who my browser trusts. We can see that in the certification path that there is something called Komodo Secure that has issued a certificate to something called Komodo RSA Domain Validation Secure and so on. That in turn has issued and signed a certificate to netzero.net, which is this site. In order for the padlock to be green for the client, the client need to trust the root. They need to trust this one. If we look at one of the certificates, like the root certificate, we can see that there is a lot of information in the certificate. There is a valid time when the certificate starts to be valid and when it expires. Under the details, there are a lot of more information, like the serial number. There is a fingerprint. There is different fields that identifies its usage, what it should be used for like this one, key usage is certificate signing, and the friendly name is the name we see in the browser, and so on. All certificates look like this and have a number of fields in the certificate. The reason that we have a green padlock here is because our browser trusts Komodo Secure. Let's have a look at how that looks like. All browsers and operating systems have a list of trusted root certificates. That trusted root certificate store can be found in different places in different browsers. In this case, I go into settings of Chrome and get into the certificate under advanced settings. And I have a number of tabs here. These are actually certificates installed in the operating system in Windows. Under the tab trusted root, 
I have a list of root certificates that I trust. Among those are Komodo RSA, which is the one that has signed the certificate that I use on netzero.net. Because I trust Komodo, and Komodo has signed the NetZero certificate. In this case, there is an intermediate link in the chain so that Komodo has signed the certificate of the sub CA. That sub CA has signed the certificate of NetZero.net. So there is a chain of trust. Therefore, our padlock is green and everything is nice and good. If it is not nice and good, it looks like this. Prior to this, I got an error message saying that this is not secure. Are you really sure you want to go there? It looks different in different browsers, but you can get past that if you find the right link to click on. In this case, I have done that, but I still have a broken certificate and a cross over the padlock. Instead of the green padlock, nice and shiny, I have this one with a crossover. We can have a look at this one as well. This certificate, there is an error. The page is insecure, and that's because the certificate authority is invalid. Let's have a look at that certificate. I have browsed to a web server, which is our firewall. I have browsed to the Cisco ASA. Look at the certification path for that certificate. It's temporary self-signed. That means that no one else has signed that certificate. The ASA has created the certificate itself. Since my Windows client and Chrome does not trust the signer of this certificate, I got a certificate error. This is how it looks like. The ASA has created this automatically. It does that without you have to do anything. It just creates that when it installs for the first time. You can install proper web server certificates, which you should in the firewall if you run SSL, for example, with AnyConnect. But by default, it looks like this. It is self signed and therefore. I get a certificate warning in my browser. And later on, you will see that I get a certificate warning in the AnyConnect client as well. In order to fix that, you need to install a certificate on the firewall. So in order to get a certificate working on the firewall, we need some parts in place. First of all, we have an outside IP address of the firewall. That's the IP address that the VPN clients connect to. In my case, I connect it to the IP address. Normally, you do not connect to an address, you connect to a host name in DNS. So your outside IP address, which should be static and not given from DHCP or anything because it should not ever change, your public IP address must be configured on the outside interface of the firewall. And that IP address should be pointed to from some kind of domain name, host name in DNS. That DNS connection must be in place the clients should connect to that host name always, never to the IP address. If the client connects to the IP address, we will get a certificate warning. So the client should use, in this example, vpn.domain.com to enter in the host field of AnyConnect to connect to the firewall. That DNS name should resolve to IP address 1234, and 1234 should be the outside IP address of the firewall. The certificate has one field that is called common name, CN. The common name is the name field of the certificate. That common name field must be the same as the host name. So when you request a certificate, you need to request it to be given to the common name, in this example, vpn.domain.com, if that's the host name you want your clients to connect to. When you have your certificate in place on the outside interface of the firewall, and the certificate's common name is vpn.domain.com, you will get the client to connect to vpn.domain.com without any certificate errors. This is exactly the same SSL certificate that you request and buy if you want to run HTTPS on your web server. It's exactly the same thing. The procedure to get a web server certificate for your web server is the same as if you want to request a certificate for the web server. You need to create a certificate signing request from the firewall that says, I want a certificate issued to vpn.domain.com, and that's a CSR. That CSR is sent to your certificate authority where you want to buy your web server certificate, and also that you have proven your identity and paid what they want to have in money. They will send your certificate back and you will install the web server certificate in the firewall. In the next video, we will have a look at how to configure SSL certificates in the Cisco ASA firewall.